yet. We might do some periscoping, maybe. <laughs> I know Toxie, um, it, it's a huge thing with us. We usually always stream, uh, but we're already running late as it is, and we wanted to make sure we got this down. So here we are today, and look, we have the beautiful Big Cutie Eve in studio with us. Hiya. And we're going to be talking about a couple of things that really hit uh, home with both of these ladies, uh, Toxie and Q Big Cutie Eve, and that's going to be a big subject today. But the first thing I want to mention is my favorite story of the week, because we haven't been doing like current events at all, um, because it's all been about Trump and his, you know, pretending to be some other, you know, his publicist or whatever. It just, I don't want to talk about Trump anymore. I just don't want to talk about him anymore. <laughs> Uh, but there was a story this week that came out about a uh, guy who was running for a congressman in Virginia. Uh, I think his name is Mike Webb. And he did a screenshot um, and put, posted it up on his Facebook. And the screenshot included a couple tags, uh, tabs up at the top that were actually porn sites. <laughs> um, now, while a lot of people said, oh, he's so stupid. Um, Unbelievable. Couple of things. Number one, they weren't gay porn. So, I mean, not that gay porn is a bad thing, but imagine the flack he would have gotten if it would have been gay porn. Sure. Right? And unless he, unless he were like an openly gay. Right. Right. Uh, you know, politician. Exactly. And then uh, number two was uh, when uh, the a couple of places asked him for his comment on it or whatever. Um, he says, you know, a lot of people told him that I needed to fire my social media guy, but ever since those were po that was posted, uh, my Facebook and Twitter likes have gone through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> so it it's proves that no publicity is bad publicity. And when it comes to porn. <laughs> right. And you know what? I think um, probably one of the reasons why Trump is doing so well is because that's probably the average Joe at work, right? They got a couple of tabs open that are open to porn or at their home computer or whatever. There's always a couple of tabs open to porn. And uh, so that's just like a normal thing. So he's like an average guy. He's the kind of guy you want to hang out at the bar with and have a beer and talk about uh, Lola's amateur thighs or whatever. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, as an amateur pornographer, uh, yes, sure, why not? Like, what's, what's the problem with that? Maybe he was looking at it on his lunch break. What's the big deal? I don't, I don't see it. I don't see any problem with it either. No, absolutely not. Unless he was, are like... Are those porn tabs you're closing there? They, they are. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. We, we already had a moment before where we were going on my computer and I had to click on something. I'm like, no, no, don't look. Don't look. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. there, th there is something to be said though. Um, it all depends, I guess it all depends when it comes to the porn that you have and where it should be displayed. Like if it's with your friends and stuff and it's like normal everyday porn, they're, they're gonna be like cool kudos, you know, fist bump, whatever. Um, if it's like some kinky stuff, expect to get laughed at maybe or uh, teased or, mercilessly. Or really high five. A Friday yeah. night date. Right. Yeah. Or, yeah. right, right. Or, that's exactly right. <laughs> it can go even better. Um, it's one of the reasons, and we've talked about this before in the show, it's one of the reasons I have a separate Tumblr porn is when I, when and if I ever get a new boyfriend, whenever we have, start to have the conversation about sex and what kind of sex do you like, I'm just going to give him the link to my sex tumbler that's pretty and smart, he can actually. see what it is that i love i i love that idea <laughs> oh wait a minute <laughs> logging in to make sex tumbler right now that's brilliant <laughs> right right so yeah I, and uh, but uh this week sierra sent a picture of a what was it like an eraser a penis shaped eraser i did i miss this and sierra if i did how did sent I miss us a it? picture of a penis oh i think it was a toy oh, no no here's let me tell you about it <laughs> yes. i was where was i um somewhere with where i shouldn't have opened it yes That's, i know better yes and i know if it's from sierra i should not open it and i kind of forgot and um i opened it in a very bad place <laughs> so <laughs> Yes. So it all depends on context. Like she, yes. if she was sitting in her car at a McDonald's drive-through, no big deal, right? <laughs> right. But I wasn't, and um, 
Deal you, big. <laughs> um, how many how many other people saw it when you opened it? Uh, I actually don't know. I, I quickly uh, <laughs> there were others around, but I quickly uh, I quickly turned and like. All right. <laughs> So that was that was my one big story that I wanted to cover this week. Uh, not a big story, but a story that uh, I thought was very very cool. So <laughs> um, I did uh, get some. You know, you know how on Facebook you get those messages and you don't know whether most of the time if it's your personal Facebook page you don't return them, but my new page on Facebook is a uh, actual page instead uh -huh. of a profile. Uh -huh. So I get I get uh, points against me if I don't answer messages. Oh, right. You know, because it displays how right. fast you answer right. messages, right. you know, always replies or replies within the hour. So I've gotten two messages since I've been on that page. So I'm going to give a shout out to Alex and uh, because uh, we talked for a little while today. But I also learned uh, via the couple of messages that I got that, w that we have fans that are all over the world, number one. One was from New Zealand, right? The other one was here in the U.S. And... Uh, he was 13. That is, um, you know, based on the content that you review in the show, um, that kid should call me when he's like 22. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, think he should be listening right so now. So <laughs> as, as, a, as a mature adult female, um, I don't want kids that young or younger exposed to the kind of kinds of, of things not. that we of talk about not. but on the internets there's really no way you can stop that from happening right, right? Uh, not put it out there is one way of doing it but we 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 make ourselves known as an adult uh, content and oriented radio show even though there's no nudity and there's no actual pornography or anything like that we do talk about adult immature subjects so um, I was of course wow you're 13 <laughs> uh, not that we can stop you from listening or watching our show at least I hope you learn something so I know that going forward I will probably always have in my head there are 13 year olds wa <laughs> watching this show you're forever tainted <laughs> um, so uh, let me tell you something about condoms right <laughs> <laughs> always have condoms with you um, you should be able to buy it I don't care if it's in New Zealand or anywhere else I don't think they suppress that kind of stuff you should always have condoms with you if you're ever gonna get funny with someone always whip them out and if uh, you meet a girl and she is carrying her own condoms I don't care how old she is that's the kind of girl you want to hang out with because she's prepared to take care of her own self without having to think about you and that's what you want so there's the lesson for today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to include, it's going to be like the, the Sin City Bounty Kids Hour or Kids Minute. Oh, no. Maybe. Every week, something new just for anybody who happens to, uh, happens upon our show that is under the age of 18. There you go. <laughs> or you can move on from the show <laughs> and find a different show that is appropriate for children under 18. Yeah, but we, I think we all know that kids are a lot more mature these days, right? Well, I think they think they are. I mean, they're just right. more savvy and they're just exposed to different things. But I don't, I don't think that even with this like base knowledge, right? Perhaps you can repeat some terminology. Perhaps you know logistically how things work. You're really not emotionally prepared for any of that at 13, come hell or high water. I, I mean, that's just it. I agree, I agree. But if you're gonna hear about it, Hopefully, hopefully what we say will stick with you. And when you get to the age where you are emotionally equipped to hand, I, I, don't, I don't even like to say the word handle it. When you're emotionally equipped to understand it better, it goes click. Oh, that's right. That's what they meant. Those ladies from the Sin City Bounty show. So hopefully that's what we can do for you. <laughs> oh, no, no banging. No banging. Okay. Uh -oh. So um, let's talk about the big story that you have, Toxie. Okay. Um, and just really quick, we were back on and then um, we lost it again. So um, for those who were, we, we had a few in chat kind of waiting for us. So um, 
Yeah, we had um, a story. If there's if there's another one to talk about, will I try and get it up? Uh, I don't have anything. Do you, is there anything else? That, is there anything this week that bothered the hell out of you that you want to talk about it? Um, goodness, what doesn't bother the hell out of me? Hey! That's really a better question. Um, no. Um, well, you know, in relation to the story that Kelly is going to bring up, there was a great article um, that sort of circulated a couple weeks ago on Medium.com. Uh, entitled your fat friend is going it alone right um we just posted that on our facebook page by the way and i i think it i mean it's worth a read like if you're out there right now go click on that article and have a read because it really resonated with so many fat people that i know that somehow the onus is you know on us to sort of fight the entire world when really, you know, shouldn't you stand up, you being the average Joe on the street witnessing bad behavior, shouldn't you be the person that stands up and says, I will not stand for this? But I think in every fight, whenever you have to have a fight uh, for whatever it is, whether it's um, the way that you're being treated or um, whether it's medical or whether it's mental, the fight is always, the onus is always on the individual having to go through the fight itself anyway there are plenty of uh n you know nothing against it and i i i read part of the article and it sounds it, it, it's great and just the title alone doing it alone yes i can see that um but there are plenty of fat ladies that i know that could give a shit about what other people think or say mm -hmm. or do uh, in their presence and it's just an attitude that they have of course that surface I don't know what they do in the privacy of their own bedroom if they're breaking down if there's you know depressed or anything like that but um, surface wise and and I want to think that they're honest 100% even you know publicly as well as privately that it doesn't bother them at all so but does that mean you should still not stand up for injustice no 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 because I'm it's not, not bothering that. you know because i'm because i'm able to persevere no no no. Because, yeah. i'm not saying that but what i think i think what caught me and why i mentioned it is because you said um yes it, it is something that you do go through alone and any any ordeal that you have to go through you have to go through your own and it's nice to see somebody else say hey leave her alone or hey you shouldn't be doing that or hey what is wrong with you people but any any amount of people uh along the aisle of you know the path that you have to walk that are in your corner and in support of you they can't do your battle for you oh of course not but i you know if you are battle wounded it's an awful lot it's 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 great when somebody can pick you up and prop you up and help you along the way. I mean, that's just how it happens. And that's perfect, but mm -hmm. you're still going to have to either get back on the path and deal with the other side of the aisle that's all, you know, uh, fat person, you know, put the fork down or whatever. It's still your battle. These guys can say to them, you shouldn't say that, but all of their talking is not going to do anything. The one guy from your support aisle can go over and punch the guy in the mouth over there. It's not going to change his mind about the way he feels. I, it's not going to change the way that he's going to... Uh, he's not going to stop saying those kinds of things just because there's somebody over on the other side that says, you shouldn't do that. Well, I, I, I respectfully completely and utterly disagree with that. I think that some people do not realize what they're doing. Some people, this is bad behavior because they think it's funny because they're trying to get a rise out of people. And when the, that doesn't happen, it sometimes makes people think twice. You know, it's, I it's, won't disagree with that. Yeah, I, I just agree think, with that. I think that there's a way to change. You're never going to change everybody's mind. But I, I, think I, for, that, I forget about the ones who are ignorant Yeah, and that are, can be taught. But there are, they are so far and few between. I don't know that. I think that there's, I think that people in general are empathetic. And I think the problem, particularly with fat people, is you are looking at us as having, you know, some sort of fixable character flaw. Therefore, you feel like you can sort of rip us apart, you know, that we brought this on ourselves by our bad behavior, by our laziness, by our, you know, fill in the blank. So therefore, they think it's okay. I mean, you can teach people to be better people. It's how you, it's how you raise children, you know, and you can, you, people can change their minds. It's about giving them good examples. And it's about, I mean, rallying, like, I, I'm, I'm not speaking well today, but... 
I, I understand what you're. And I, I'm not completely against. I'm not completely against your stance. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that no matter what, it's still your personal battle. Oh sure. No matter what, sure. even even if you're you are able to get people to change their mind over here, you still have to walk the rest of the gauntlet, mm -hmm. as it were. The shame is is that it is a gauntlet. Right. Well, that we can. And if that that we change, can agree on. If that could change, then that could change. Um, I mean, it's happening now with transgender and the bathrooms, and there are so many people that are speaking out against the North Carolina laws and everything. And even the gov even the federal government itself is uh, bringing charges or uh, suing uh, the North Car uh, North Carolina government over this law. So, if things can change, then that's wonderful. But it's going to take years for that ah but the process you're making my point for me the yeah. process is happening that the other process. people are saying right. i am not transgendered but this is a human rights issue and i shall yes. not stand for it that's what i'm asking for for fat people exactly that and this i'm is not a human right. rights issue and i'm not and saying I shall not but look stand at for it. but look at the arguments that are happening even even just in our everyday lives on facebook i i get posts from uh, Sierra all the time about transgender equality. Everybody can use the bathroom. I use the men's bathroom because I don't want to wait in a long line, you know. And there are plenty of people fighting for that. But even in my timeline, from people that I actually love, I get posts about no, men should not be allowed to. Men should not be allowed to go into a woman's bathroom at all because my daughter has rights to safety or whatever. And there are just so many people on that side of the aisle that say, no. Okay. We're not going to do it. Your daughter does have rights, but I, I don't. Um, How do her I rights mean, we, supersede that? Right, of, right. But she has the right to, um, what am I trying to say here? Your child's safety is your responsibility. Yeah. So it doesn't matter who's allowed in the bathroom. Right. Why is your child going in by themselves? And why? But we're talking about. And why about is the it only your female child? Well, we're <laughs> right. Well, we're talking about the fights. You know, when when you have a when you have an issue, mm -hmm. there are people on both sides, and there's always going to be the people on both sides. One side has to be louder than the other side, grow larger, get louder, or have more uh, force behind their word or behind their words uh, to actually affect change, right? Mm -hmm. So before anything can change. I mean, maybe. I, I just think that reasonable people, there'll always be pockets of reasonable people, you know, like. Right. So I don't know that it's about who is the loudest wins. And I think that, you know, no, because if it was who's about the loudest wins, well, the loudest here are those who are fighting the 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 good fight against it. I'm not talking about loudest in volume. I'm talking about I'm loudest saying, in strength. Right. But uh, but I, they're those um, who are protesting it do have numbers, and you know they they do have a lot of very vocal backing. So. I do think that people approach things differently, and it, it doesn't matter how many people are screaming out in front of a voting booth. It matters what you walk into that booth and vote for. You're absolutely right. You know, I'm not a protest. I was in my youth. I was a protest in the street. You know, I marched with the AIDS quilt. I did all. I also grew up in a city where that made a difference. I grew up in Washington, D.C., and that's what you did. You got out there and you marched. And at some point, I said, you know, like, my way to convince people is to sort of have a reasonable discussion with them and sit down one on one. And that affects change, so it doesn't matter. You're absolutely right. The one-on-one -on -one conversation can affect change. It's about humanizing people, and the problem is, you know, people break things down into us versus them. It's the same with being fat or gay. It's just different. Anything that's different is somehow threatening to us as a species, and we are prone to fighting against it. And if you can sort of sit down one-on-one -on -one with people and humanize this thing and say, no, this is not, this is not affecting your way of life, it's not going to change, this is just another human trying to live their lives, to me, that is the most effective way to change people's minds. You're absolutely right. And it's a lot about relativity, too. If somebody has, if somebody has in their family an extremely fat person that is going through issues or having problems, then the entire family rallies. Usually, I want to say usually, rallies behind their family member. 
and their friends. So it's all about relativeness. Yeah, and, and that situation fosters empathy for now the stranger that's in the street getting yelled at for being a fat person or getting uh, you know, their picture taken, which is what Kelly's going to talk about, that fosters the empathy that lets you walk up between that person and the camera and say, not on my watch. I will I, not have this. I'm all for, I'm, I'm very cynical when it comes to the public because I'm I see it. A little bit. <laughs> I see it from, I see it from the point of view of social media uh -huh. as opposed to relationships. Uh -huh. um, even though, because in my relationship areas, we're all on the same page. We all are empathetic towards uh, the Kelly who we're talking about. We've all had issues like this before. I've had plenty of kids look at me and go, wow, you're really big. You know, and I'm like, well, a yeah, kid, yeah, a kid it's a doing it, celebrate. a kid doing it is much different than an adult doing it. It is, no, 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 it is, but it's because still when a, when a child says to me, and and I've had you know my my child's friends like one um, very polite little boy. The one time I was driving on a field trip and he's behind me and he's like, you know, he says my name and he's like, do you know your hips are really big? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I do actually. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> You know, no big deal. Well, yeah, I mean, he stated a fact. He, mm -hmm. He's a child. And I find it no offense. I had another one of her friends say to me, um, cutest little kid. Actually, it's more so the boys who are completely unafraid to, like, make statements. But he said once, um, and my grandma goes to, and, and it was a fitness place. Oh, Curves. My grandma goes to Curves. Have you ever considered going there? And he's like, I think you'd really like it. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, that's that's probably true like he was speaking truth i'm okay with that but adults know better <laughs> <laughs> to me that's just a little future bastard <laughs> i'd be like you know what kid shut your mouth there he is wasn't a, saying like, "Hey, badass, why don't you go to curve?" That's sort of that well-meaning. Yeah, I stopped that well. You know, you know that well-meaning advice in the bud. No, you know that's no some, thanks. You know that's something that he learned from his right. Mom you know exactly. Or, you know exactly. Oh, he at, from. from his um, grandma who made him write an apology letter to me. Oh, good. Oh, oh yeah. Good. He See? had to. He had to give me a face-to-face -face apology and a written apology. Did he understand why he had to apologize? He did, but I don't think, um, and as he explained, and they, you know, they explained, he's being raised by his grandparents, but they explained that it was coming from a good place, and I've known the little boy since kindergarten, and he really thought that, you know, knowing why his grandmother went, that it might be something that would be beneficial to me. So it really wasn't done with malicious intention. Right, but, but they nipped it in the bud. Good, and I just good for them. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have caught it. <laughs> so, how are we doing over there? Yeah, it was back on and then back off. So we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll get it going. All right. So, so your story. Um, well, we. We have a uh, mutual friend, mm -hmm. uh, Eve and I. Uh, she's an actual friend. You've met she's her. Actually, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, she had. It, it actually happens often to her. This this friend, her name is Kelly, and I'll share her post on our Facebook. It's on my Toxie page, um, but I'll share it on ours as well. Um, but Kelly is. Um, would be considered a supersized BBW. She's I fat. Think, she's yeah, she's fat. fat. I think she's very public about her weight. She has. Um, she doesn't she model? She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But doesn't right. she do some modeling? She does. Right. Right. And so she um, she's very proud of herself. Uh, she's she's very proud of who she is, and she's very confident in herself. But what tends to actually she was in an article. Um, it was a, a bikini article that Eve here was in as well last summer. So it was... Um, yeah, Cosmo picked it up online. It was. It was in Cosmo. And it was, you know, beautiful women who are very confident and, un, you know, unafraid to wear bikinis. And so, um, anyway, what happens often is that she is out and people will feel free to call her names. Um, they'll purposely stop to tell her, you know, hey, you're really fat. And they will take her picture. And it, it happens all the fucking time right all the fucking time and so she how does what is her normal reaction to st um, people being that way i think it depends from um the level of there's maliciousness times that, yeah I, there are times that you know I, I know it's upsetting there are other times that she has taken their picture 
and shared it like this person, you know, felt it was okay to do to me. So um, here they are. <laughs> Uh, and in this case, these there were two individuals who were very blatantly um, vid uh, recording her. And she had asked them to stop, and they didn't. And they continued to do it. And they were just in front of the, she was in the Walmart checkout. And they were in front of the Walmart restroom. And so they didn't stop, and she said to them, if you don't stop, I'm going to take a picture of you and see how you like it. So they posed like they were taking a selfie. So she did exactly what she said she was going to do. She took a picture of them. She shared it. And she shared it explaining that, um, you know, they. she said, even when I asked him to stop, he didn't stop. Even when people were staring and asking him why he was doing this, he didn't stop. He filmed me and took picture of me so loud and unafraid of how that might make me feel. What if it wasn't me? What if this was someone without confidence or without the love that I have? When I said I was going to take their picture, they posed. This is not a selfie. They knew exactly what they were doing, hence why they were trying to cover their faces. It's disheartening that people would rather ignore or deny what is happening instead of trying to stop it. So she shared this, and it has been shared... Let me see if I can. It was um, up to like 3,700 times, I think. Yeah, it, it's it's been quite a lot. So at first, the reaction was, you know, initially it goes to to your friends when you right. first post on Facebook. The initial reaction is the people who know her. Right, and I, and I read like, most of those. Right, and they're like, you know, this is appalling. Let's share this. People need to be aware. They need to be aware that this is what happens. Um, I, I can't believe this, you know, you, you handled this very well. And then it, it became shared more and more. And so then what started to happen was um, people started to become malicious. And I'm going to use... The rhetoric you know, started to change. It did. And so I'm going to use what I kind of experienced today and what it is, and I know we've talked about it on here before, but um, some of us belong to this women's group mm -hmm. online. And so somebody in there shared it. And I thought, in this particular group is all about like supporting other women, uplifting other women. We also talk about really dirty stuff. So that's why, you know, it's the perfect group for me. But um, that, that's the intention behind the group. And, and it's uh, many of the women in there are plus size. So it's a way that many women have found empowerment to be able to you know wear a sleeveless shirt or go right. out in a swimsuit for the first time let alone a bikini you just go out in a swimsuit some of my you know? favorite posts are ladies who are about to go out on a job interview or on a date and they'll put on a couple of outfits take pictures right. of themselves and ask the community what they think right and they'll get and it's usually very loving and wonderful feedback right about so, just fashion choices because it's hard for a big girl so here's what happened <laughs> and what happened here is exactly what happened to her as well in a very you know more open setting the first thing people started to do was go through her facebook and then it was comments like she's only doing it for attention um, look at her other pictures she has pictures of herself hula hooping and in a bikini and she's crying for attention Someone else said, she's a blogger. Of course she's going to write about it and make it up for attention. Um, then the other argument was, they're taking a selfie. She's just crying for attention. So they didn't even bother to read they what she had wrote. No, right. and they didn't care. It didn't matter what she wrote. Because in, in many people's mind, it, it, there was no way to fathom that this actually happens. Therefore, they have to be making it up. And so I actually went in and I said, like, hey, guys, <laughs> I know it happens sometimes, you know, when something goes viral, um, but I can tell you that I know her personally, and this is true, and this happens, and in caps, all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it didn't matter what I said. I, I received a lot of uh, feedback as far as, you know, they went through and found other pictures, as did others. They found other pictures on her Facebook of her 15-year-old niece and her um, her companion and said, like, look, these are the people, the same people that were in Walmart. And <laughs> just like as uh, any sort of reasonable person, like, 
like her niece and Christian didn't look anything Nothing like no. those people. So no. it makes me wonder who these people are that are like, look, other blacks. Right. All, bla <laughs> all black people look oh, alike. Okay. I mean, that they is clearly, I mean, alike. that was clearly <laughs> That's what the it kind was. of first people that were posting that. Right. And so it continued on from there, even, even to the point where, I mean, you know, Sierra got in on it and she's like, guys, if we fucking say like, this is serious, you know, this is real, this is real. Like, this is not made up for any type of uh, attention or publicity or anything. And immediately everybody's going, but look, um, she once called someone chubby. And how can you, you don't put out grease fires with grease. And I said, well, she's using chubby as a descriptive word. Somebody was taking a picture. The comment was, you know, something about, I, I thought I had seen like skinny people, um, or shaming you, and she's like, no, actually, she was chubby. This all comes to the whole glass house throw stones yes. kind of thing. So it was very much that um, that she, because in one post like a month and a half ago, because she said somebody was chubby, and she's very open in saying, you know, she's fat. Um, but because she said someone was chubby, that completely discredited this horrific event that happened to her. So, um, bottom line, people really suck. Like, I, I don't. <laughs> and this is I why don't. we get cynical. This is why. And what I had even explained, I mean, I myself have had it happen multiple times. Multiple. Three that I was completely aware of. Um, the very last time I was in Fuddruckers, it was when I was still, um, you know, married with, with my ex and my daughter, and, and we're sitting at the table, and a table full of um, young men were like taking turns sitting and um, you know turning so they could kind of take a selfie with me in the background they were literally taking turns and they were looking and laughing and normally in that moment what I would have done had my child not been there I would have said let me give you a better angle and I would have stood up and bent um, which I had done on one other occasion <laughs> but um, it's all about context. It, yeah. it was it was in a moment where I was feeling very vulnerable. Absolutely nothing was done. I spent my meal feeling like shit. I got up. I at one point went in the bathroom and cried, you know, dried my eyes so my child wouldn't see it and um, came out and held my head up high as they still continued to giggle. And I fucking chowed that, you know, Buffalo Wild Wing uh, or Fuddruck or whatever it was. Actually, it was Buffalo Wild Wing because I had the wrap. But I chowed that fucking thing down and like, well, they're going to take pictures. They're going to take pictures. So, Which is so weird because if you're sitting down, because the you're not like large. Well, you know, except I'm for your hips. Right. There, and know. I was sitting the way it's, if you've ever been in there, it's got. Oh, I um, see. So they had an angle of. Right. The middle's open. Like there's a big screen where you can watch all these sports and the middle is open and they're all you know individual tables and then there's booths uh down this side and down this side so i was on the end i understand and so i was very you know yeah. clear sight my my thighs and hips and ass i sit pretty high and then my child was in and then gotcha that was it. So oh, that's crazy. It happens, and it, it happens, sucks. I that, has that happened to you oh, at all? Girl, please. I um. I love that. I remember distinctly the first time it happened, and after that, it's all a blur. I actually cannot go to the strip. I cannot go like down like to Fremont or anything without it happening. That's it's more the rule than the exception at this point in my life. And but the first time it happened, I was in a uh, a bar. I was just recently married, um, and I was in a bar in LA with some friends from New York. And my husband's like, "There's people behind you are taking pictures and videos and photos of you." And I was like stunned, and I didn't know what to do. And I said, are you going to do anything about it? And he's like, no. I'm like, well, then what the hell are you telling me for? Right. Then finally, uh, he has a conversation with them, but it goes on and on. I mean, they keep doing it. So um, in the end, uh, he confronts them. They, oh, we're taking a picture of the sign over her head, blah, 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 blah. And it just keeps going. Like, this has disrupted our whole evening. So finally, I walk over, and I don't look at the guy who's doing it. I look at the girl that's with him. And I said, I understand that he's a dick, but you're really going to fuck this guy tonight? Like, that's what you're going to do? Like, that's your best life? Nice. And uh, she was mortified and got up and started to leave the bar, and he's chasing her. And I'm like, I wouldn't do it if I were you. So, I mean, 
In that instance, it sort of became a ha-ha, but it was really painful. Like driving on the way home, right. I was upset with my, I'm like, why would you even tell me that? Um, right. Because uh, yeah, so I guess this guy yeah, wasn't like, getting laid either. I'm like, yeah, you're not gonna do it. Well, we're we're divorced now. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, like, if so you're no. not, yeah, if you're not gonna do anything about it, there's no point in this. And then now it's to the point that I warn people. Like, I went to a show on the strip with an old friend who I'd seen in like 10 years, and you know, before we get going, I just say like, hey, here's this thing that's probably gonna happen, and. Like at this point, it's it's disruptive. It takes up my valuable time to stop and correct people. If somebody's really blatant about it, sometimes I do. I'm not afraid of the altercation, but I mean, it just happens all the time, and we perpetrate that culture. Like by all these sort of things that we like and laugh at on Facebook of somebody doing something ridiculous. It's all the same thing. You know, you're policing other people's looks and behavior constantly, so people think that it's okay, and they're actually looking for that shining moment to put something on World Star or something on Facebook that's going to give them, you know, a bit of notoriety. Right. People of Walmart. I mean, that's a huge one. I always, when I bend over in Walmart, yes. I know, like, I listen for the click. And I have looked on the site because I'm like, at some point my ass is going to end up on that site. Like, I am going to be a hot mess one night, you know, running in just to grab some milk or tampons or what have you. And I'm going to bend down for it, and there it is, you know? And it'll end up on that side, and people think it's, you know, it, it's really hilarious. But um, but that's the crux of it, that, like, right. as a fat person, you can't just exist. Like, I literally cannot go sit and have my lunch on a park bench without being entertainment for, you know, the hundred people that are in the park. Like, you can't run into Walmart and just exist mm -hmm. because somehow that snapshot is your entire life. And it's look at who this person is, look at what they've done to themselves. People feel justified in, you know, taking you down a peg. It's disgusting. There, one of the um, comments that I started to see, and actually as today has progressed, the comments are getting nastier and nastier. Um, but one that I had seen today is if you stuff your face like an elephant, um, then you expect them to, you know, you, you should expect people to uh, watch you in the circus. So, um, you know, they there's people who are justifying the fact that because she is fat, this is okay. Like she did it to herself, and she made a spectacle it, of herself. Right, so might and that as well has made it okay. The like there's right. no reason that she should have any peace in going into a Walmart. You know. So. Um, while I'm, I've only had it with kids. So let me ask this question as kind of a devil's advocate. I'm, I'm not un unsympathetic, but I've never had anybody take pictures of me or anything. That I'm, you're aware of. That I'm aware of, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm usually pretty good about being aware of my surroundings and what's going on, you know, uh, terrorist bombings and all that crap. So do you think Kelly Kay does a little bit of mom? You're absolutely gorgeous. I, I know you know that. We were just actually commenting on your eyes and how gorgeous they are. You're one of the most popular members of our crew when it comes to the looks, but you do take a lot of selfies. I do. Uh, Big Cutie Eve here is also a model. She's very pretty. She doesn't dress shyly. Not she doesn't. It's not risque. Actually, when not, she got out, I'm like, you are so dressed. <laughs> do you and think? I often see you with so much clothing. Um, and I actually know a lot of other ladies who are on the larger scale as well, who haven't experienced it to the extent of people taking pictures or outwardly being, you know, blatantly being stupid. Do you think it? it a lot of it has to do is because you're pretty, or because. No. Is it, are, are you saying because of the way I'm dressed, I'm asking for it? Is that what I? Because that's what I hear. Well, that's that's what I hear. But if 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 that that is the Apply mentality, that logic to any other situation and tell me if it's okay. No, it's and not. That, I'm not saying that it is okay. I'm saying, do you think that because you're very attractive, because of uh, you don't dress like a mom, you know, like but a I, well, for example, myself, I do dress right. like a mom. But, you, you know, know, I'm not out in the not, same thing I'd wear to a club. I'm right. not in Target, which is where it happened once oh, as but well. Think of, but think of uh, fat women as portrayed on TV. They're in the house coat. They're in the apron. They're not wearing a navy, you know, with some cleavage. 
You know what I mean? Well, I, I do think I'm digging I, the I'll, cleavage, by the way. I know, so it's because it's, it's about I actually, closer. No, no, leave it, un, leave it undone. It's to have cleavage today. I, so. And I see it. It's mm-hmm. lovely. Mm-hmm. I got to be thinking about and that thank later. You. <laughs> thank you for all the the viewers out there. <laughs> I think there's two sides to that. Um, one, it doesn't matter what you wear. I mean, I can be wearing my winter coat. This happened, I went to New York uh, last winter. Okay. I was just walking around the garment district in a coat and boots and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm dressed. Like, as, as <laughs> coming from Las Vegas, it, it was shocking how many layers I had on. And it didn't stop people from taking pictures of me or commenting um, then do you think it's because you're so pretty i now on occasion i have gotten you're so pretty if only you would lose some weight oh sure hey, mom. You know, and those are usually <laughs> yeah. from, those are hey, usually mom. from friends or people who are like they are acquaintances or they something are. you know i had it once from a co-worker he was a he was a co-worker i was actually you know pretty close with and he turned to me one day in the office and he's like God, he's like, you'd be really hot if you lost weight. Well, like, it's this idea, like, could dude, you just be my you. standard? And I'm uncomfortable <laughs> with the fact that I'm attracted to you. Here I am sort of feeling right. these feelings, but you don't fit the aesthetic of what should make right. my dick hard. So maybe you could change because I'm the most important thing happening I, I, here. I love that. Say that again, freestanding. I'm going to clip it out. I, I don't know what I just said. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. But I mean, that's what it is. It's a sense of entitlement, right? That I'm here for your pleasure. It's a male gaze, right? I'm here for your pleasure so I should do the following things and I think other women sort of fall into that category they're like you could be this you could be desirable you could be beautiful if only well fuck your if only like this is who I am and and like I and I don't I don't owe anybody anything I don't owe you pretty I don't owe you any fucking thing all I want to do is exist right and the just larger, let me get my tampons in right. Walmart <laughs> And the larger your body is somehow, like, it's just exhausting to do. And I think about it sometimes, like, I go to Costco, right? And I know, okay, I buy three chickens all the time because I shred the chicken and I, like, use mm-hmm. it all week. And I was like, you know, make it and I put some in the freezer. Right, right, right. But every time I put three too. chickens on the conveyor belt, I know that everybody around me is like, well, there's dinner, fatty. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, <laughs> one's well, for the ride home. <laughs> and, and, and maybe some days all three are. Now, like, and what, what would it matter? What, why right. does it matter? matter to you what I'm doing with my fucking three chickens from Costco and I'm going to continue to I'm going tomorrow so if you're ready to shame me Henderson tomorrow roughly noon I'll be buying three chickens Ooh, she's gonna have some attitude yeah, and I've got no apologies for that so um I, it's just complicated but I do think sometimes that I get I often get this look that first the the, re, the read on people's faces is attractive and then they're disgusted by the thought that they could find me attractive, and then the venom comes. Like that's right. happened more, particularly yeah. at bars or something. Like I'm out, and they'll see me across the bar, and they'll look, and then they're f- like, "I got tricked," you know? Like, how dare you catch my eye? Right. Like you catfished them up yeah, for exactly. real? Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't look down far enough. Yeah, I think there is. I think there's something to that. And I often feel like people are more vicious the more put together you are because they somehow feel like you know they they don't want to like you i think so as well because i see that venom uh towards uh more media oriented whether it's bloggers or uh social media uh uh or entertainers or Mm -hmm. models um that vitriol usually goes towards them more than anything else yeah it's a how dare you and i often feel like the sentiment behind it is like i hate myself and I think I'm better than you. Like, how dare you like yeah. yourself? Yeah. Um, who is, oh, Tess, Tess Holiday. I had just seen something um, today about, I actually wasn't even aware she was pregnant. But, um, you know, people feel that it, it's okay to tell her about how unhealthy <laughs> being pregnant and fat is. And that, you know, how disgusting she is for daring to bring a child in while being fat. Right. And so apparently that's, you know, really, really heavy on her right now. That's kind of the culture we have, though, lately. Uh, Everybody is willing to tell you if you're pregnant and you happen to have a glass of wine with your dinner while you're out at Applebee's or something like that. Well, yeah, but that's a different, a mommy shaming is, is... that's bad too, but this is specific any, because she's any, fat. Any kind of shaming, it just happens across the board. You know, I'll, I'll admit, I've done it to parents who can't control their children. Mm-hmm. I will child shame or whatever the hell that's called, or tell a parent, um, you really should take care of your kid because something's gonna happen and you're not gonna like it. <laughs> what, I, what I try to think of though, 
in every situation is everything is just a snapshot of somebody's life it's yeah. not the whole film right so mm -hmm. like you do not know what that kid or what that parent has been through today you do not know why that is happening do i want to be sitting next to them on a plane no but it's just a snapshot i don't think that's their entire life so you always have to try to be empathetic when something like that is going on you're you know? absolutely right you should always try to be on a personal level I'm, I'm like that all the time. You can't, you can't know a man's life unless you walked a mile in his shoes, right? But not the whole world is like that. And it's going to take a lot for us to change that. There's my cynicism again. It takes a lot for that to change. I think the new generation that's being raised now um, might be the ones to usher in an era where you're not going to have that anymore because it's usually older people who's acting that way. It's usually people my age that act that way. You know, and maybe just slightly less younger than me. But these teenagers coming up, they're like open and I think, everything's okay I mean, okay I think there's them. a little bit of a, a change and especially within that age. Um, and just to use as an example to, to kind of go back to my own daughter, you know, she's in middle school. Middle school sucks. Middle school is like the worst. I still have very traumatic memories of middle school. And um, I know, don't bring them up, don't bring them up. <laughs> no, don't we all, is what but, I said. I was right. just with oh, okay. I was with yeah. you. And so, you know, my, my daughter's pretty well into middle school, and she is not a tiny girl. Not only is she very tall, um, and not only is she built like a brick wall, uh, but she's a heavier girl. And so, you know, I've asked her many times. I was, I was really kind of afraid that in middle school um, people would be cruel. And it was something that worried me, something that – prompted me to keep her in private school longer than I probably um, should afford. have or <laughs> yeah <laughs> probably longer than I should have and um, I did it for that reason because I was scared I didn't want her to go through and she's always had such a bright light in her eyes and I didn't want other people to come in and dull that and so I asked her you know does anybody say anything to you um, has anybody ever and she's like no I absolutely not I mean one day she said yeah. you know we were talking about it and and I said have you ever been bullied and she's like do you think I would be <laughs> and I'm like no not at all I was just wondering but you know there is something it. to be said for size at that age like um, I'm always like so in love with your daughter because like she reminds me of me at that age a little bit like mm -hmm. I was I was much bigger but I was super tall and I was relatively athletic um, and it's sort of a different, um, like I saw other kids get bullied for various reasons, for being fat, for being whatever, but I just didn't get it as bad. I think because there was genuine fear in their hearts, you know, that like, <laughs> right. you know. But I've noticed, you know, I've been at her school a lot the past two weeks and I've noticed that there are a lot of other girls who are, you know, built similarly to my daughter that are just equally as like in the mix, you know, nobody over to the side kind of, you know, I wish I, I, people would talk to me or nothing like that. Like, they're just really, you know, kind of into it. And there was a, a whole nother thing that, you know, I've, I've, I think, discussed maybe with you the other night. But it, it was amazing that this um, one of her classmates in seventh grade came out just last week. Wow. And um, he was so embraced that we were sitting there at a table. And these two fifth grade boys come up and they go, uh, hey, he doesn't believe me that, that you're gay. Can you tell him that you're gay? And so he's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the other little boy who didn't believe him, he looks at him and he's like, can I shake your hand? And so he's like, yeah, sure. And he shakes his hand and he's like, that's really cool. I've just never met anyone who was gay before. Oh, God, I just and broke my heart. And so it was very, um, it wasn't like it was when I so was in middle school. So accepting, right? You know, I, I definitely think but that... But look who's raising that generation of kid. Parents like you, right? right. right. Parents parents like you, um, and I, I, you're a little, I'm about 10 years younger than me, probably. And so I'm, I'm, it depends on I'm the in age that I gap. Tell people, I right. don't really so I'm kind age. of still in that gap. Um, I'm also very empathetic and... Not that I have any kids, because I don't want kids. Um, I would probably raise them that way. My niece and nephew get those lectures all the time <laughs> about acceptance and stuff. But that's who's raising them now. Anybody older than us are the ones that you're going to get contentious issues with. True. Or though the kids that those parents raised, the ones that are horrible. That's, yes. I, I, you know, I say it all the time, and it's a horrible thing to say, but I can't wait for that older generation of racists and, uh, you know, 
any kind of ists to just leave, right. to die off because but they're old, they're but fossils. Even so, you don't, just because they are doesn't mean you have to be. I no. mean, I will tell you right now, right here, right now, my father, absolutely racist, absolutely. Um, but I, you know, don't consider myself to be my father. Right. I don't consider my child to be her grandfather. Right. I don't feel that just because he was, that that's something that we just had to say, well, that's how I was raised. And so I'm going to continue being, you know, an asshole. Um, well, something I mean, happened. I love you, Dad, but, you know, you're an asshole. Um, Is this why I never get invited to the family reunion? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm clear now. See, you got it. You got it. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll not mention the fact that, you know, the majority of his grandchildren are actually biracial. <laughs> um, so, you know, he loves that. But um, They probably don't go to the reunion either. <laughs> you know, yeah, they, they don't go either. Um, but anyway, it, it doesn't it doesn't mean it just because they no, are. You're, you're right. But there's something must have happened in your life to where you said something snap something in you said damn my dad is a racist i'm definitely not going to be like that or you just don't even i mean i definitely feel like like my grandparents said racist things you know like against other like but at some point you just look at them like you just realize they're ridiculous right yeah you know, it's right. just like That's what it is. i just think i don't even remember a time where i was like i'm actively choosing to be different from these people yeah. i just always remember shaking my head like you know it, you're an idiot like it's right, just this like right. understanding right from the beginning that right this is not how this is not the way to think this is not how people are and i feel sorry for you if anything that was always the emotion or you know or as in my family my family doesn't believe they're racist because they're of race right 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 but they are so racist that right. it's not funny well not right. so racist but they don't even realize that they are racist uh -huh. um you know just the well, subtle things that they that's say a great or point that that we're coming back around to my point of view that a lot of this is about education it right? is. And, and conversations it is. you don't realize that some of the things that you say are hurtful and if you've never examined your beliefs they're just in your head this is what you believe you've never had to right. examine them you do not even know what you're doing these people might not even know these idiots in walmart taking a picture don't even understand that what they're doing is bullying and that it's damaging right. and if they do then yeah then you can call them assholes but if they don't it's worth a conversation do you understand how this happens do you understand the sort of spiral that this puts someone in you understand what you're doing and they might just say i have never thought of it that way yeah, yeah i saw the people in those picture and i think they knew exactly what they were doing probably. and they're just assholes in my yeah. case just to give an example the the times that um you know and, and i recognize it doesn't happen to me near as often you know as, as it does to others like i know for example kelly in in the case that we're talking about it happens every time she goes out. I mean, people have like key things on her car where she lives. Um, they, I, I believe she's had to move even, if I'm not mistaken. I think she lives in um, I don't know. Or she's about to. But, you know, they've, they've keyed her car. They have purposely pulled up next to her in traffic to shout things to her. Well, that doesn't happen to me. I mean, I've had these, you know, a couple instances. People say something, they give you the side eye, but in the in these particular cases i mean they've been like young guys like older teenagers young maybe early 20s just and they're bucks. you know just maybe kind of assholes and, and they think it's funny now which may not be funny then i mean i have a brother who uh he's now a teacher but for a long period of time he was a fucking asshole <laughs> and he wouldn't probably hesitate to do anything like this even though he grew up with you know, a fat sister, a fat mother. Um, he would have just thought, hey, this is fun. Let's go along with it with my friends. Maybe we should make it a, a parenting uh, must that you have to point out all the flaws in your child that can be made fun of just so they know that it's not good to make fun of oh, other people no, and their don't flaws. Do that. The world will break your children down. <laughs> you build them up. You build them up. The world is there to or break you know them down. Just to teach them a lesson. You don't. Don't <laughs> teach them those lessons. Your do forehead not, is too no, tall. No, do not shame. Do not point out you are your perfect. Are you're perfect. We got five minutes. You children out there listening <laughs> in New Zealand, you are perfect little beings. You are, you're perfect. Here's the deal. Society will already tell you what's wrong with you. Your parents don't. You're, you're absolutely no. I mean, I'll have no I have no hesitation if if it's a personality thing. I'd have no hesitation saying you know d don't be a jackass or you know you're yeah, acting if you're correcting like a complete, bad behavior yeah like that's here's different. here's how it's you're acting like a brat like that's what's happening now yeah that's the theory of but an I, eye for an eye kind of thing right 
or don't throw stones if you live in a glass house kind of thing. So, hey, uh, we're Sin City Bounty, uh, guest starring uh, Big Cutie Eve. Give us your uh, details here. Give us your info. I'm six feet tall. <laughs> not, for, not that info. Not She's going to be at Costco uh, and Henderson tomorrow. That's the stuff okay, I have on me. On, at Costco. That's Henderson the stuff tomorrow. I have on my big cutie Buy me trading three chickens. cards. Uh, I am, uh, I, uh, if you would like to see more of me, and I mean a lot more. Um, <laughs> no, you, you got to look right at the camera oh, sorry. when you do that. Hey, <laughs> if you'd like to see more of me, a lot more, uh, you can find me at eve.bigcuties.com. I take my pants off an awful lot there, and it'll make you smile. <laughs> we'll make sure we post a link up on our Facebook page for that. Uh, so we've been talking about a lot of stuff today, but one of the big things is um, be careful or think before you speak. Think before you whip out your camera. Think before you. You went that I was, yeah, I thought that was going in a different direction, <laughs> right? Right. Because we're so pervy. Right. <laughs> um, while it might be funny to you, it, it, you're actually dealing with other people when you're doing. You're dealing with real, actual people, right? Who um, have the same right to life that you have, regardless right. of who they are, what they look like, and what their situation is. And if anything, uh, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of doing this, and sometimes I know I come off as maybe gay when I do, but when I see someone who is gorgeous, I will go up and say, oh my God, you are so pretty. I think people are beautiful, just the way they are, uh, males and females. And I always usually have to give the caveat, I'm not gay, I'm not trying to hit on you. You know, oh, I, don't I don't want to get your caveat. pants. I'm like... But you want to give me your digits, beautiful. lady? <laughs> it's all although, right. Although some people would say that that is, you know, judging people on their looks only. But I love hearing that I'm beautiful. But I, I often do. I, you know, I'll do that. But I do like to tell people, like, if they're wearing shoes that I think are really cool or, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, I like their outfit, their person's Or their awesome, top their is hair. perfect. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, I, I do like to share that with people. Absolute perfect focus strangers. on the focus on positive things instead of negative things. I think that's a really good life lesson. Yep, I you totally know? agreed. Um, especially when you're out there in the public, because I think you would like it if someone came up and commented, you know, complimented your cheeks that day or your hair or your coat. I um, love your cheeks, Toxie. <laughs> I do. I love her eyeballs. <laughs> I want to take them home, put them on a shelf. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You can rub my cheeks later. SinCityBounty.com. Uh, our website has changed a little bit. Go check it out. You can subscribe to get our videos. You can subscribe to get our audio. Uh, we'll have galleries up probably in this next week. Uh, follow us on Facebook or Twitter or Google+. We'll get an Instagram if one of these girls want to man it. We'll see you next week. We love you. Bye. Bye.